With Dead Rising 4 having been recently released, it appears that the zombies are back, and with them the familiar face of Frank West, albeit with an unfamiliar voice. It appears that while the Dead Rising series keeps trying to introduce new protagonists, it always comes back to Frank. Going so far as to release an expansion for Dead Rising 2, we basically play through the same game, but as Frank West rather than Chuck Green. And it's that particular expansion that we're going to be looking at today, which is my personal favourite Dead Rising game. So what makes Dead Rising 2 off the record so damn good? As my introduction might have suggested, one of the things that makes Off The Record so good is Frank Quest himself. He's grizzled, he's rough, irreverent, he's a pervert, and he's actually kind of an asshole. So why does Dead Rising keep coming back to him, and why do we keep enjoying playing him? You can't keep Frank West bottled up. With any player controlled character, one of the best ways to increase the player's connection to that character is to reduce the distance between us and them. That is to say, the more closely the character's actions and behavior reflect what the player themselves are feeling, the more of a connection is formed between them. At the start of the game, the zombies are a decent threat. If you're not careful, you can get surrounded and stormed into torn to pieces, and you have to navigate them all with a healthy respect for the larger mobs of zombies. But as you rise in power and skill, zombies turn from a threat into more of a mode of locomotion. It's actually faster to get around them all while fighting zombies sometimes. Frank himself treats the zombies with casual disregard, taunting them and really enjoying carving a path through them. The increasingly nonsensical tools you're given to interact with the zombies helps to demonstrate the ridiculousness of the premise and the setting. It's a zombie theme park, and you've got an all-access pass. You get to have fun with it. And so does Frank. It's just a bug, don't lose your head over it. Now, the escort missions are where the zombies always remain a nuisance. You're often called on to bring survivors back to the safe house, and these guys love nothing more than to rush headlong into the hordes of the hungry undead. The thing is, Frank thinks of this a lot like the player does. It's a chore. He makes it clear from the start. He's not a hero. He's just here to get the story. I needed something to get back in the game. I investigate this, and maybe I get back to doing what I do best. On the surface, his motives are entirely selfish, but that's not all there is to him. See, even though he often grudgingly agrees to help the people he meets, he does help them, and often goes out of his way to do so. This is primarily achieved by the game rewarding the player for doing so. Helping people out is often the best source of experience points, and Zombrex, the medicine Frank needs to stay handsome. By encouraging the player to guide Frank in this direction, he comes across as a better person than he makes himself out to be. And this is also conveyed in the story as Frank becomes more and more invested in the fate and safety of the people around him. He acts the tough guy, he acts the prick, but despite himself he really does care about others. And this is really important as it sets him apart from these guys. Psychopath! Psychopath! The most dangerous opponents in Dead Rising are not the endless hordes of the dead, but the few living that remain. Branded as psychopaths, these are people who have turned to violence due to breaking, savagery, or opportunity. While the bulk of Off the Record is fairly light in tone, every encounter with a psychopath is much darker, with the depravities of the psychopaths often being genuinely disturbing. Always ridiculously over the top, but all the more disturbing for it. They act as a counterweight to all of the stupid fun of the world around them, and this balance of camp versus creepy is a huge part of what gives Off The Record Story so much staying power. Every one of these psychopaths is 
super invested in what they're doing. Whether it be delivering the mail, feeding their cat, or just cooking a lovely dish. What, it, what they're doing is the most important thing in the world to them. And that level of commitment really helps you to engage with their characters, even if you only see them for a moment. Their madness lends a level of authenticity to a world gone... mad. Hmm. But Dead Rising is really a study in opposites. It's laugh out loud comedy, but it's also creeping horror. It's mysterious and intriguing, but incredibly stupid. It's ridiculously over the top, but sometimes surprisingly subtle. And it's the pacing and the way the game balances these disparate elements against each other that makes it so effective. There is so much in this game. So much that it could easily have become a chaotic mess. But all of these elements have been blended together with thought and with care. Much like Frank's photos, it's the combination of comedy, drama, horror, and erotic that creates something truly special. But the psychopaths also say a lot about Frank himself. Throughout the course of the game, Frank proves himself to be something of a monster. He cuts through legions of zombies with glee, he builds up a higher body count of living people than any one of these dangerous psychopaths, and he kills people with one-liners! You may now feed the bride. He is by far the deadliest person in the entire mall, which he proves time and time again. What sets him apart from the psychopaths is that despite his callous exterior and his readiness to murder people, he still values human life, and constantly puts himself in danger to protect others, despite having no stated motivation for doing so. In his own words, He's just here for the story. But he becomes a hero despite himself. He protects and saves those around him because, from a character and a gameplay perspective, he has no choice. And that is what makes him a compelling character. Anyone can be a jerk hole. What makes Frank interesting is that he's a jerk hole who's thrust into the shoes of a hero. And that mismatch, while by no means the most original thing in the world, makes for a great character. Well, you're definitely gonna need some painkillers when I'm done with you. Well, talking to you is giving me a headache. Something the game highlights is how close Frank is to becoming one of the psychopaths. It shows this through Chuck Green, the original protagonist of Dead Rising 2, returning here as one of the psychopaths. Like Frank, he is very dangerous, and like Frank, he had the potential to be the hero here, but in the expansion, they just removed Chuck's daughter, one of his biggest links to humanity. And once she was gone, that was the push Chuck needed to become every bit as deranged and malicious as the psychopaths that he would have otherwise stood against. Which makes us question, what kind of shove would it require to make Frank break? Thinking about it, I don't know that there is one. He is dismissive of most of the people around him, with the exceptions of Sully for his integrity, and Rebecca, who he respects professionally as a fellow journalist, and teach me that in journalism school. But he doesn't really have an external tie to keep him grounded like Chuck did. Instead, it's more his unshakable sense of self, his certainty and confidence about who he is and what he stands for, that prevents him from becoming one of those psychopaths. At the start of the game, this mainly manifests as arrogance and selfishness, but as the game progresses, Frank becomes more and more committed, and the players, and Frank himself, are forced to admit that his early selfishness was really just a front. What do you say, you and me, go break this story wide open. Fantastic. There's a reason Capcom made off the record, and it wasn't just to inject new life into the game. Dead Rising 2 had a lot of the same ingredients as its expansion, but as I mentioned, 
When you throw that many things into the same pot, you have to be really careful, you're gonna make a mess. The main character of a game, or of any story really, has a massive impact on the turn. Chuck Green, while interesting enough in his own right, was a father on a quest to save his zombie daughter. Now, it's a fine character, and indeed it's an idea that's worked elsewhere. But in Dead Rising, it skewed the tone too far towards the serious. It meant that instead of the opposing scenes balancing each other, they clashed with each other and the whole thing started to break apart. The balance of tones in Dead Rising is part of what makes it such an engaging story and game. By bringing back Frank West and his no shits given attitude covering a heart of gold, they were able to restore balance to the game and create something that you can really sink your teeth into. Ugh, 